Hey everyone, uh, it's a beautiful morning, so I'm making a video outside. I just wanted to check in now that we're halfway through with Unit 2 in our Intro to Historical Study class. Um, I've been enjoying reading your ideas and thoughts on what historical thinking is all about and how we should approach the study of the past. As we've underscored on Twitter and in some of our other communications, um, history is not static. It's much more than a list of names and dates. Um, and some of the reasons that it is so contested have to do with the way we know what we know about the past. The idea that historical evidence itself is imperfect, it's messy, it's incomplete, um, it's often biased. Um, sometimes we discount certain aspects of historical evidence, as was the case um, and still is the case in some quarters with uh, oral histories or oral traditions. Um, it's taken academic historians quite a while to overcome their sort of Western tradition of seeing the written word as somehow more valuable. Instead of seeing uh, both types of historical evidence as things that we need to think through critically in order to see where the limitations, where the biases are, um, and where the strengths of those accounts can be, right? Because written histories can also be untruthful, um, and it's up to the historian to read, um, read carefully, read broadly, and um, in such a way that we'll be able to put together the best picture possible or the fullest picture possible of the past. Um, as several of us pointed out, you know, history is more like a puzzle um, than like a linear um, sequence of events or something like that. And it's a puzzle in which sometimes the pieces don't quite match up. Sometimes parts of the pieces are missing, you know, so imagine doing a puzzle where that was the case. Um, and I'm so, so sometimes entire pieces are missing, but sometimes pieces are like misshapen. Um, and so historians, again, have to figure out what do we do with that? Um, how do we deal with contradictory evidence, um, contradictory stories? Because ultimately, history is the study of how human narratives have been created. Um, power has a lot to do with that. Um, culture, um, race and ethnicity, um, gender, all of these different things are important to thinking about how and why stories have been told in certain ways um, and what that means for us now. So uh, thanks for your hard work thus far. If you haven't yet posted to Twitter for the historical thinking um, uh, activities in Unit 2, you can still do that for credit. If you're not sure how to do that or what to do, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to help. Um, I do have uh, student hours tomorrow morning. Um, from 9 to 11, so you can uh, check in with me via Zoom if you need. Also, just looking ahead, um, I'm going to post uh, below this video uh, my video of an example of, of the assignment that's due uh, the end of this week for Unit 2, the last part of Unit 2. Um, you're to identify a historical item um, and write about it. There's some questions in the unit narrative in Medium uh, to get you thinking about um, you know, historical objects as uh, or things that we interact with on a regular basis, how we can start thinking critically about the ways that history uh, manifests itself in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and as I've pointed out a few different places, Medium allows you to not only write write out words, but also add images, also add videos. Um, and so that's an example of how you might talk about your historical item on a video or through a video if you would like to do that. Um, let me know what questions you have, how I can help. Also, looking ahead to Unit 3, so that'll be next week starting on September 20th, um, we will be focusing on close reading. And so we're going to be using Hypothesis. Um, I have an extra, uh, an extra meeting time, an optional Zoom time, in addition to the regular student hours a week from tomorrow on the 21st um, from 4 to 5. So if you want help getting started with Hypothesis, that's what those hours are for. Um, and I'm happy to get on Zoom or be on Zoom and walk you through uh, how to use Hypothesis. It is a pretty cool tool because it allows us to directly annotate readings. So we can talk about uh, 
why close reading is significant, why it's important for helping us to uh, to apply historical thinking to our study of the past. Um, and we can have those conversations right in the margins of the texts that we're reading. So, um, so I guess all that to say, please look at Hypothesis this week and if so that you can know whether or not it's something that you want to ask some questions about um, so that you can hit the ground running next week in Unit 3. All right, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Hope you're having a good Monday.